Good afternoon. As we enter into this mobile era that we're all very well familiar with, I think nobody in this room came without a mobile device. And I don't mean a laptop. I'm talking a smartphone or a tablet. You might be hearing it vibrate. Thank you, sir. And even the youngest person in the room has one, too. We are now looking at, or should, let me say this a different way, your organizations now should not be looking at application development as what can we be building for PCs and Macs. Web apps are pretty cool, and that tends to be the back end of a lot of mobile apps, but they really should be thinking mobile first. They should be thinking about building apps that are enabling users securely, right? But today we're going to talk about more, more around protection and how these mobile apps on devices that are not rooted can also be able to exfiltrate data. So who here last year heard me talk about Zipmonom? I got one, two, couple. Um, we're taking it a little further. So apologize for some of the redundancy, but I think setting the baseline of what some of this malware can do and what it looks like is important. Mm -hmm. So when they're building these apps, thinking mobile first, they have to think protection first also. They have to think about using uh, proper coding methodology so that something like the manifest uh, XML file that pops up when you have an Android app getting installed is not abusing permissions. Um, they might feel like, hey, we need these permissions for certain reasons, but there's better ways to do this. So, oh, got cut off a little. There we go. So we're going to talk about Zipmonom, which is uh, short for Zeus in the Mobile No More. So if you're familiar with Zeus, we'll talk about Zeus briefly, but quick introduction on who I am if you have never seen or heard of me before now. Uh, first the crew, put others first. Uh, folks that helped me a bit with the Schwarznet Labs, which is just some hobby that we have. It's not like a real business. But if you want to participate and, and contribute or you want to do some malware research or build back ends, let me know. But we have Ninja Sloth, who is not here today, unfortunately. And you may have heard of Beltface. He doesn't do much but sleep. That's about the extent I get out of him. Um, but I thank them for their contribution. So this is my name. This is who I work for. This is who I'm not. <laughs> I know what you were thinking before that came up. I have had mistaken identity upon me a few times, even after James Gandolfini's passing. I appreciate his acting skills. I wish I had them, but in no way, shape, or form am I him. And um, I think he's a better man than I am. So I got some certifications, probably like a lot of you in the room. And one day I was just kind of like, well, what am I doing with these? So I decided to assemble a house. And since I'm Jewish, I thought I'd have Santa come down the, Christmas, uh, the, the chimney because I thought that would be cute. And I've really always wanted to have gifts from Santa, and I never have. So here's your moment to feel bad for me. You too, right? <laughs> no? <laughs> um, I like to travel with my, my posse or my entourage. There's one of them. The other guys are up in Troy hanging out with Mom. Uh, don't need to go through all the introductions, but uh, you can see on the top there that we call him Benny the Destructor. Aside from putting all the Q-tips in his ears, he one time gave Mommy's iPhone a bath in the sink. That was a $279 lesson for Mommy. But we like to extend ourselves outside of IT and InfoSec and screens and all the games and everything that's fun on the internet. Internet, you know, Agar.io, anyone playing AGAR.io? Good stuff, right? We got one. I know you do, but awesome. Um, do other things with your life. Enjoy life while you still have it because one day it's going to be gone past you, and you're going to say, but what did I do? I built a whole bunch of cool servers that have been decommissioned years ago. Leave something behind. Uh, I've, and this is one of the things that we've left behind. So uh, my son and I, a few years ago, asked a whole bunch of questions about computers. We go to the library. They didn't really have anything for his age. Uh, back then, I think you were, what, six, five? I don't know, five, six? So we decided to make a book. It took us about a year part-time between the photography, the writing, the editing, and everything else. But it's out there. It's on Amazon. It's a little dated, not too much, but leave something behind. Do something else with your life. I have uh, a little bit of a speaking history. Uh, don't need to go through all of them. I seem to be well known for setting things on fire on stage at ThoughtCon. Uh, a few years ago, 
I did a hack on Bananas Foster, and people seemed to really like that more than what I was talking about. So they just had me make more fire. It was pretty fun. Uh, and then just other things that we've done, you know, Black Hat Arsenal and some secure computing and stuff like that. So uh, if you heard earlier, I'm one of the original uh, creators of Hack for Kids. Real quick, 30 seconds, Hack for Kids is our way of uh, helping kids learn how to be safe on the internet, best practices while exploring science and technology, really to help them discover more about themselves and other types of technology are out there besides what their parents bring in the home. I call it payday when uh, Atiro, which is one of the, the names that we call the kids, discovers something they've never knew existed and loves it. At Circle CityCon, uh, I think it was about 14 years old, he discovered crypto, we had about nine challenges. He sat there all day and did as many as he could, and he never did that stuff before in his life. And by hand, he was doing all the binary by hand, all the base 64 by hand. You know, you could type it in, it's a lot fast. I wanna do all of this. That's what we're about. If you wanna help support us uh, earlier, made the announcement, um, thebooster.com forward slash H4K, Yeti Art. Uh, thank you, Chris. You're not Chris. <laughs> Chris Madalina, who was here earlier so far, has made a purchase of a couple shirts today, so I want to thank him. You could thank him too, but uh, you can also help us out because this is the only time we're doing this particular fundraiser. We might do another one next year, but who knows. We do get help from other people who you might know. Uh, other fundraisers we've done are uh, Hacker Time Out, so uh, you kind of, just for example, Brandon, if I want to put you in Time Out, I pay Hack for Kids 20 bucks. Somebody puts you in handcuffs for five minutes and you either pick your way out, bribe your way out, or sit, sit down for five minutes and serve your time. So it was very successful at B-Sides uh, uh, Chicago and uh, Circle City Con and some other places. We're gonna be doing it at B-Sides Las Vegas in a couple of weeks. So if you're gonna be there and you know you wanna put someone in handcuffs, come by, we'll have them. I can't stand every time I tap it, it hits the mic. Also remember La Dosa Nostra, if you heard of LDN, this was our challenge coin. Yeah, it doesn't come out very well, but it looks pretty cool. A little uh, um, family, uh, the, the Sopranos family theme. So, you know, I really, I'm not James Gandolfini. I don't, it's just a weird coincidence. Uh, oh, if you didn't know, I live in Chicago. If you can't tell from my accent, I'm originally from New York. And no way am I a fan of them. Any? There's always one. Is there any Yankees fan in the room? It's okay. No? There's always one. Really? You just don't want to admit it. Somebody in here is a Yankees fan. So let's dig in. Enough about that nonsense. So when you're looking at the mobile malware, or um, I've also heard the term PHA, potentially harmful app, kind of like that one, because while Zipmo itself is considered a Trojan, which is a malware type family, um, it, it is really more a PHA. It does malicious things, but it doesn't take advantage of any exploits. It doesn't need exploits. When you look at the target, this was from uh, last year, and it really hasn't changed that much. Maybe the Symbian number's gone down a bit. Maybe the iOS numbers come up a little bit, but it's pretty much representative of wh where we are today as far as the platforms that have the highest level of risk for PHAs. So what is Zipmo? Zipmo is Zeus in the, in the mobile, which comes from the PC uh, Zeus malware, which is a Trojan. It's really known as like the banking Trojan, which uh, you, get it, you get infected, however it gets there, it doesn't really matter. Uh, you guys could be creative, phishing attack, website, drop, or whatever, email. Um, it gets on your PC, and what it does is this HTTP inject into your web form. So if you're filling out like a a banking web page, or you're gonna buy something online. So normally you might see like username and password. You wouldn't have it ask for your CVV number. We see it a little bit more now, but back in the day we didn't see it as much. And that was one of the things that would inject. Or just something else, like give me the five digits of your social security number, or give me your whole social security number. It's like whatever the attacker wants to inject, they could do that dynamically from their command and control. It's pretty cool. And it does a lot of other stuff. There's some videos like online of me showing how you could use it for tech support or um, other interesting things that uh, Zeus does as far as like remote desktop control and stuff. It's, it's crazy. But Zipmo was created to mainly steal text messages or um, things like MTANs, 
we're not really they're not really used here very much more in like um, Europe and Africa like North Africa they use these MTAN's mobile transaction access number and the MTAN is by itself is marginally useless but when you start to profile somebody if you have your Zipmo malware or PHA on the target device and as you're collecting information you kind of learn their habits when they're going to check their bank account or how they're communicating then eventually you'll know when to stage your attack but also um, you'll have a whole database filled of all their text messages so you can kind of look back at that history of maybe they transmitted something that you could use in your attack what is Zipmo nom kind of makes sense we've talked about Zipmo well, what's the cure? Uh, again, you probably heard it earlier today. It's, it's bad form to go in there and say, you're wrong, but not, here's how you fix it. Stop saying you're wrong. You could say it if you got a solution. And here's the solution. What Zipmonom is really doing is it's, it's filling a gap where there are individuals out there that have Android devices, but they don't want to install any type of client on their Android device. Okay, quick survey. Raise your hand high if you have one or more, doesn't matter how many, Android devices. Higher, sir, higher. There's people in the back that see you. All right. Only, no, 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 no. Put your hand down only if you don't have any antivirus software running on it. Be honest. So you, got, you, you, you have antivirus software running on yours? If you have no antivirus software, put your hand down. So we got one with three, four, like five, six people that actually use AV on their Android. Very cool. I don't want to know who. I used to work for a company that manufactured that. And that's the problem. It, are you doing it because you want to or because your employer says you have to? I'm going to do it because I want to. We are encouraging what we do it now. Okay, that's beautiful. Encouraging, not so beautiful. Requiring is, but you get it. I know you. I know your background and how your users are, and you just got to phase it in. And that's probably everybody's users. But most users don't want another layer of processes and things consuming RAM and um, space on their drive and battery, right? Or how the, how the antivirus client is actually doing the analysis. Is it storing signature files locally or is it pulling to the cloud? Is that consuming your data plan? How often is it doing that? So I'm not putting a knock on client-based AV. It's good. It catches a lot of the stuff that's out there. This is much more specific for the SMS sender family. Um, this Zipmo NOM tool will detect if Zipmo, not liking this mic, Zipmo is on the device by talking to it with text messages. It seems so kind of elementary, but sometimes the simplest ways get the biggest results. And I'll show you more about that. Um, if you do want to help out, yeah, there's a link there. It's still pretty much in prototype. I've been so busy with Hack for Kids the past year, I have not done much more development. But there's a lot of analytics. There's a lot of things we could do. Once in a while, I see somebody going in there and doing a test. I get a notification if somebody uses it. It costs a few pennies. It's not that expensive for the text messages. So if you have a, an Android device, you could run this from anything because it's a web app. You don't need to run it from your Android, by the way. But you'll get deeper in there. So this is uh, Zipmo or at least the version that I have, there's a few out there, it identifies itself as an Android security suite. If you look at the acronym, the PHA authors have a sense of humor also. Um, thank you for the charity, I appreciate it. Uh, and this is what it looks like on an emulator. What happens is the zeros, it takes your, I'm getting ahead of myself, but that's fine. Mm -hmm. It takes your IMEI number, the last, what is that, eight, seven, eight digits, and reverses it and prepends a one and, and uh, uh, pens a three so it looks like a real activation code try to like play with you and make you think that you have like a real product um, some other things that I try to keep up with this stuff again but it's hard being a parent of three active in all the other stuff we do and and hack for kids but um, some of the stuff that we've seen in some of the advancements actually whoops put my glasses on just to make sure I get this stuff right is, oh, um, Tor, it's using the Tor client. You guys probably heard about that, right? Some malware's out there. They're putting the little, uh, the orbit, the Tor client on there and using that as a way to hide their traffic and communicating so that you can't really find the command and control. Or if you're, you're looking at the network, uh, like activity and you're collecting packets like, uh, through, I guess, an IPS and IDS or FireEye or whatever, um, if that traffic's all encrypted, 
how are you going to know what it's doing? Right? Um, some other things is uh, some of the malware, and actually we came across one for iOS the other day, is uh, they're, they're, you, you can download an app from the Public Play Store or wherever you might get it. Try not to go to those third-party markets for, or sideloading for your own benefit. But the, um, some of the infected malware, it's actual virtual currency miners. So it won't be Bitcoin, but it might be like script or quartz or something else where it's going to be killing your machine, you know, your, you know, your Android device, while they're making money off of it. A couple of ways to identify it. Again, battery life, heat. If you just start to feel that thing in your pocket is like always hot, you got to do something about it. You got to take it out, pull out the battery, and then just reset the firmware. Get it done. You're not going to be able to find out which one it is. Or if you want to start hunting through the processes, if you got those skills and you want to do it, have at it. It'll take a little while, but uh, eventually get there. But the, the heat alone on the device, it, it, it's toast in the board. It's not going to last. It, it brings the life down from, let's say, three, uh, two to three years to like six months. And then the boot kits, that's another way. Your device is toast. The boot kits really get low in the, uh, in the firmware and the ROM, and there's, unless you can give it to the manufacturer, there's really no way to remove it. Most of the tools that we have now, just even if you reflash the firmware, it comes back. So just kind of be aware of that. And then the last one, um, the rats are back. Remember the remote access Trojans on Windows and PCs and uh, all those fun tools? They're doing that on Android as well. So a little bit of the behavioral analysis of what the malware is doing. So the, the, it has these detection evasion tactics, so DETs or whatever. Uh, one is URI obfuscation. Uh, I got an example of that on the next Prezi slide. But it's also encoding some of the commands. So this way, again, if you're looking for this kind of traffic, if you're building uh, ne networking signatures of what it looks like to have Zitmo on your network, and again, that's assuming it's on your Wi-Fi and you're able to capture it. If it's going through the carrier signal, good luck. Um, so you might never, might not ever know, but it takes uh, the code there. Uh, so actually, that's a key. So that's an AES key that was being used to encrypt the traffic. So we typically, what do we think about keys? You got to protect them. You got to be careful how you distribute them. They're embedding it in the malware or the PHA code, I'm trying to get in the habit of saying PHA. So the, and why does it matter? It doesn't. It's freaking malware. They don't care. They'll just create another key and they'll just distribute a new version. There's, they're not securing or protecting data or corporate secrets. And then we mentioned the, I mentioned the communication channels already, you know, Wi-Fi, carry, et cetera. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit more on this if I can. Nope. Come on, Prezi, work with me. Get in there. All right. So on the left is the encrypted traffic with the, um, the obfuscation, and, on the, and that was with the uh, AES key that you saw on the prior, prior Prezi slide. But when it's decrypted, we were looking at it, and you could see that it's just passing a lot of parameters, parameters around uh, what the device type is or the IMEI or anything that could be used to uh, attack this device or if, uh, if somebody wants to send something down and maybe like push an app or kind of get to it however they choose, they now have uh, information, enough information about the device to do it. But you can see even the server is like Ingen uh, Nginx. I can never really say that. Nginx. Um, and then there's some other code at the very bottom, which still to this day, I can't find anything in Google what it means. It's already decrypted. Now I'm finding things where these presentations are coming up when I put that uh, zero, dollar, uh, zero ampersand sign 28 TEP triple X. I just think it's a terminate code. It's something that when the malware or the PHA is done communicating with the command and control, it just sends, hey, I'm done. So why that instead of an OK makes no sense. But one of the fun things, if you want to do this with me, is rebuilding the command and control. So we build the web app, we use the malware, and in the way it responds and talks to the web app we're building to build the web app. So I'd love to reverse create. I won't say engineer, but reverse create it. Yes? So the question was, have there been any changes in the termination string, whether like sign change or something else or zero? Not that we've seen. We've only had one particular variant of uh, Zitmo that was doing this, so we decoded it, and this is what we saw. If we were able to get other variants or some other um, proof that it was from a different developer or author, then we might have something to match and correlate and kind of come up with uh, a rhyme or reason. But no, it's a good point, but we have not. You're welcome.
So with that, moving on. So I, I look at some of these other third-party analysis. So um, it was uh, Fortinet. They did a uh, threat report on different kinds of malware and mobile malware, PHAs. And this is the report from the results from the data from 2013, but the report came out in 2014. And there's a reference to the source. By the way, at the end of this, these, these will be all made public. And there's a, a source slide at the end. So if you want to go and read this stuff yourself, it'll be there. Have fun. Um, but what the real message here on this particular uh, chart is on the far left, that New Year LB malware, you need client side AV to find it. It's not using SMS. So, you know, Zipmonom, kind of cool, fun project, interesting, but it's not going to solve all your problems. Or if you want to use like a rat, um, an app reputation authority, like I guess Veracode FireEye app authority, because if this stuff's really important to your environment not to have exfiltration from your devices, then, you know, this is not for you. This is more for people out there or for fun. You know, if you want to just, hey, I got a new device or I've been going to these crazy markets, let me run Zipmonom on it. But you, you really got to consider all of these other threats. So, um, and then you can see that's where Zipmonom is and its friends. The current data from Kaspersky shows that these SMS Send family, they call it the SMS Android Stealer, they call it the SMS Send, has ri is, is rising a lot. That's the green bar. Look at it from November of 2013. I guess uh, I guess this this number right here is a little off, but probably they need more data. But when you look at everything else, the bars are starting to come closer together, versus that, where it's much lower. It's a real problem. That's the point. And there's the reference down there at the bottom. So let's look at some of the other research. Let's, we're gonna you know this is some of the nice statistics and the facts and behind the message, but. You guys are familiar with the uh, Android at manifest XML file, right? So when you go to install Android software, you get this pop-up, and it says, here's all the different things this software wants to do. It may look suspicious, but you click install anyway, right? Or at least your users do. So when you zoom into this, this is specifically from Zipmo. And just alone, like if you look in that lower block, read SMS, receive SMS, broadcast SMS, you know, write to the settings, check your Wi-Fi state, all these different things. When that's presented to you, it's written a little differently, and actually it will install Zipmo so you can see it for legitimately how it's done. It should scare the hell out of you. It scares the hell out of me. But your users may think, well, that doesn't seem right, or they get the orange text that says, SMS may cost you some money, which is true, maybe, depending on your plan, but they just kind of ignore, they ignore what's above it, which says, this software is going to be able to read and write text messages from your phone. They just completely miss it. No need to go through all this stuff. You guys, you guys get it. Some of the settings that um, Zipmo has, so I can zoom in a little bit better, is when you just kind of look at, forget the stuff on the left, it's pretty repetitive. But when you look at the strings like the antivirus is enabled, so there's ways you could turn it on and turn it off. And that's what, by talking to it, I've learned what to do on how to turn it off. Um, the second line where it says last sended, we know that's not proper grammatical English, at least in, in the U.S. But what I found is sometimes when you look at how uh, English is used in other countries, it gives you a sense of where this was written, and it's been traced back to Poland somewhere. Not to mention the fact that they had a phone number embedded in it, which was Poland's country code. So that just made it easy to prove my, my hypothesis. Um, then the uninstall is complete in case it gives it the, the kill command and it kind of sends its last breath as an HTTP message off to the command and control that says, yep, it's been uninstalled. Uh, versions, they keep track of their versions just in case they want to make sure it gets updated and they got, they got logs on that. And then this other one right here, the next to the last line, I actually put that in there. What's kind of fun is when you learn how to uh, de decompile and take apart Android malware or PHAs and uh, you start to replace what they have in there, you could point it to your own site and that's where I start to get this intelligence. So this doesn't exist anymore. Uh, I, I got another site, but that was kind of the domain I had up and I just threw something up real quick. But that biwdr.php is the name of the file it was actually uh, calling, which the HTTP request was making. And I'm yet to find out what that means. I've 
Anyone in here speaks a language that can recognize that as an actual word? It could be. Um, it, it really, it could be, and I've seen that a lot, specifically with Zeus. But I was just trying to find out because, you know, tracing the origins back to Poland, I didn't know if that was like hello or hey or what's up or some kind of slang in the language. And I did have a, a Polish gentleman one time in the audience, and he's like, nah, it doesn't mean anything. Or just maybe some other language, Swahili, I don't know, just picking something random. And then it also keeps track of the, if it sent the last message. So in, okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. So there's um, a setting in there for an alternative command and control or an alternate CNC. I put one of my phone numbers in there just to kind of see what it would do. I redacted it out. But it's interesting how they had, that was where that uh, phone number with a Polish area code. And I tried to, I did call it, but I couldn't get through. It was disconnected. So they're probably using like a burner phone or something, which I would do the same thing being honest. Um, when we look at these different kinds of privacy violations, now, first, those are just messages that Zitmo sends out back home saying, hey, here I am, I'm alive, here's what's going on, you know, I'm, I'm there or not, whatever. But here's your stuff that it's taken. <laughs> it's taken your, um, your activation ID, which is that number I showed you was like one and then like seven zeros and a three, um, but it's actually the real last seven digits of your IMEI reverse in the code. Right below it's the IMEI, doesn't matter, it's got that, it could do a lot of damage. And then the IMSI for the subscriber, um, some manager information, like whatever the telephony manager is, as well as uh, the number on the device. So now that in this database, they've got all that, your phone number, your IMEI, your SMI, which carrier you're using. They're getting a lot of good stuff on you. And if the SMS are hidden, that's the key thing too. Most of the time, they are. You can't see it. So if you just send these commands to someone's phone, um, the, you, like, you wouldn't see me sending it to you. You would never know because it's hiding it when it receives them because it prepends a character, a special character, and it knows not to display it to the user. But for the demo, you'll see it. But you'll you, you notice that the, like, when the messages go out or you know if you send it to a phone, you receive it. Um, the next part here is like the alternative, the, sorry, the alternative controller again, the phone model, manufacturer, and the Android version. So it collects all that stuff and then puts it there as one message in a text at the bottom. So you can see all the variables there that's going to pass, like the model number, um, the AC is the activation code, H is if it's hidden, alternate C or alt C is the alternate controller, V is version, and MF is manufacturer. So they'll get your Android version and, and all that good stuff. So they'll know if, for example, if, if you're a part, uh, your phone is a part of Asia where they don't really update Android devices or they're still running like Jelly Bean, they'll know how vulnerable that phone is. This is the part I was going to tell you before. So when I stopped myself and said I'm getting ahead of myself, so what it does, Zipmo will take your text messages, it'll collect them, and then write them into that database. And that's the path that we found. Compliments of uh, Ninja Sloth there, give credit where it's due. So it stores it in data slash data slash com dot android dot security slash sexsuite dot db. And it just keeps them there. And it knows that if it receives a text and it can't send it out, um, you know, the last sended, then what it will do is it'll hold it in that database. And then if it gets the uninstall, the kill command, it attempts to send it off one last time. Let me just call home and just give you whatever I have before I die. And we found that to be interesting behavior. It's probably not a bad idea because it might have been something useful in that last message. This one I thought was fun. Who does CTFs? This was like the Zitmo CTF for me. Um, let me see if I can zoom in. Well, first, before I zoom in, that yellow highlighted string, what's that look like to you? It's not base 64. It's, it's, look a little lower where it says public stat string get a antivirus link. They just put some garbage in there. So when they call the URL where their, their site is with the command and control, um, they just put garbage and then they use this replace command to replace it with emptiness. So you actually get HTTP colon whack whack whatever. But when you look at it, if you're uh, a piece of software that's looking for things like Where's the websites that are known? Because you know how they develop these databases of known command and controls, like Zeus Tracker. That's abuse.ch is a perfect example of that. But if the links keep changing, the signatures are invalid. 
the MD5 hashes don't work. So they'll just put like one or two other characters in there and they're, and they're fine. But I thought this was a lot of fun because when I came across, I was like, God, what is this URL report value? This makes no sense. And then I looked a little low and went, holy crap, it's decoded right inside the malware. It's right there's the key. So then I just kind of took everything out. It was like a kind of a weird cryptogram. I took everything out and I found the URL was the androidsafe.com, biwdr.php, and then replaced it with another website. You can see Zipmonom's in there. When I just wanted to collect logs to see, okay, what is it sending? It was kind of, it was a lot of fun if you're into that kind of thing. Apparently I is. So uh, a little architecture on Zipmonom and how it works so you can kind of get a feel of what's going on. So from your Android device or web browser or whatever, you go to zipmonom.org, you punch in your phone number that you want to test, you check off, um, yep, you agree to the terms of service, which basically says you're not going to try to charge me or sue me for any uh, fees that you incur. You're doing this on your own volition. And then when you click the NOM button, it goes back and talks to Twilio. So we're using the Twilio REST API to handle all the messaging because I don't want to write that code. I'm not a developer, by the way. I just kind of like to play around with this stuff. And when it sends back, uh, when it receives a message and it's parsed properly, if it notices everything that I showed you before where it was sending the link, the URL to report stuff, um, actually it was like the one with the model number and if it was hidden and the version, et cetera, that goes to Twilio. When we see that, we then take it and we reply back to uh, the person whose phone number we were given and said, yep, Zitmo has been found. Do you want to uh, kill it? Type yes. We type yes, we receive yes, and then we send the kill command. And that's really what those arrows are talking about. You're going to see that. Good on time still, Chris? All right. It's fun when you get to the demo and it works. Did I get a little too far? Nope. Perfect. Here's the logs I told you about. Who loves logs? Come on. Who's a, who's a sim administrator? Still, who still uses sed and oct to parse logs? There you go, man. God bless you. Um, so I didn't have to do that because they're all pretty current. But what I found really interesting, and I, I, I communicated some of this already. So the first one, well, this is clearly from last year, and I did it for Converge. It's on the bottom of last year. You can see the time and date stamp when the first initial request went in and, and, the, log, and the, the web server received and it wrote the logs. And it was actually like AT&T subscription family map renew or whatever the hell it was. And I thought that was like, oh, that's kind of cool. I got something in the logs and I looked at it. Then I sent a request to remove it. And then it took 72 minutes, but it eventually sent out that text here. So this text, so I got the at t text sent to the phone. The let's convert, time to converge upon converge, tweet about Zitmo. Uh, that was sent. It never hit the logs. And then I said, all right, well, let me just send the kill command or let me uninstall it. And then it sent it out. It's kind of how I got that in information that I shared earlier. And it was just interesting, the timing in between. But even um, the last part, if it attempts to connect back home and it can't, it will try again two more times after five seconds and then never try again. So that's really hard to identify in your network if you're doing any kind of packet inspection or something like, yeah, we got an APT. Well, it stopped talking and probably went away. No, it's still there. It's <laughs> just waiting. So here's the, here's the begging for help slide. Uh, a lot of features I want to add. Uh, other people I talk to, they really want to help. I've gotten some requests from people on the other side of the planet, so kind of scheduling time to talk to one another is really hard, and email usually doesn't really help all the time. Well, sometimes it does, but it just makes things more confusing. Um, if anybody in this hemisphere wants to help out, please do. Um, the perks, guaranteed the results will be slow, the pay will be nil, but me will love you long time. Thank you. No offense, my wife's Asian. Um, she thinks that's pretty funny. So this is the, uh, thank you slide, but we're not done yet. Let's go do some fun stuff. So I got my smartphone here, which is my real phone. It's not rooted. In case you didn't hear me, it's not rooted. Had a couple of uh, updates, but nothing major. I need to get into MobyZen. You guys ever use MobyZen? Who's heard about MobyZen? I got a half hand. So he's heard of it, but he doesn't really know what it does. Um, just kidding. Uh, 
what it is, so if you're ever doing any presentations at work and you need to start to share these kinds of things, it's a real pain in the ass to be like, okay guys, let me show you what I'm doing on my phone to a room of people. Uh, and there's other tools out there, and I've tried them, and some of them are good, and some of them are just really not good. Uh, if you're doing anything with iOS, I personally like Reflector. So you can go there, it's by Squirrel Software, or just Squirrel. So um, if there's anything you can take away, because I'm a complete moron babbling, use Reflector and Mo MobyZen. They don't pay me to say that. Um, and you'll be able to do great presentations with these kinds of devices if you need to. So I have MobyZen installed. I need to do the, it, it likes Chrome. So I need to go to Chrome, and it wants me to connect, but I have to see if I can remember my password. Enter CAPTCHA. Why didn't you ask me to do that earlier? What? This is great. Whatever. God. All right, this is when you kill the app and you start over. Don't you love it when you're in the speaker room and you try to get this stuff to work and it works flawlessly, but in a room of like, what, what are you, 30, 40 people? It decides to choke. I don't know, how many are you? All right, I'm logged in. Let's just refresh this. I think it changed it, but why is it? Yeah, yeah. There's it's two pieces. There's actually an app, and I, on this side, I'm getting the app, and it sits there, and it does two-step verification. You log into their web app, you get that code, and then I type this in. Eventually it'll get there. So that's what I was looking at. So now it's emulating my phone. So I could just do this, and two seconds later you see that. Somebody just climaxed. No, no, no climax. No offense, sir, but I like to heckle the audience. Um, okay, where do we want to go? We want to go to downloads. All right, here's downloads. And by the way, after this, if somebody comes up and asks me for the malware, I cannot give it to you. I've had that request every single time. I wish I, can, I could go out there and find it. There's a lot of places you can go to, like Virus Share. They got over seven gigs of this stuff. Or use some other tools. I've been doing stuff with tools, trying to get more samples, like exactly what that gentleman was asking about. Have you seen other things? The sources for the samples are mainly like flash exploits or something for Windows and then I gotta like filter that out and trust trying to use like file identification tools so many false um, positives that I'm not finding what I want I'm not finding IPAs or APKs I'm just finding a bunch of other stuff and then downloading seven gigs of malware from uh, virus share is cool but that's a lot of stuff to go through and the files are a couple hundred K so what I'm doing is I'm installing Zipmo it said, I got to allow unknown sources, which hopefully your phone has that unchecked and your users have that unchecked. I am in developer mode, but normally I don't have that enabled. Unknown sources, you see that right there? Let me check it off, because once I check it, it then goes into install mode. And this is what I was showing before on the uh, Android Manifest XML file. This is the pop up where what you know, by yourselves, you guys are trained, you're intelligent enough, hopefully, not to go through this entire thing, which is like a couple of pages of, well, about a page and a half. Or if you look specifically right here, edit your text message, and you hit install, and you're not me, I don't know what you're doing. I mean, you, you got to go back to school. Um, that's me trolling everybody. How's that? But... What's really cool is on, you guys heard of Android for work? i share some stuff with you. So with Lollipop 5, or Android 5 Lollipop, there's a feature that Google built into it called Android for work. 
and native is really the way to go. There's an app that they're coming out with for pre-L, but on Lollipop native, Android 4 controls this. You bind your enterprise domain to Google Identity Services. Then they have another store called Google Play for Work. That is where you go as an IT admin when you, when you connect it with your EMM. Your EMM will then be your source to go and pull the apps from Android for Work, sorry, Play for Work. And those apps, you can authorize them from there, but you get this pop-up. You get a little section in there that shows all this stuff. So you're trained and you're going to say, yeah, I don't like that edit your text messages and read your text messages. We don't want to authorize this app in our enterprise, which is smart because if you put this in the hands of your users and you have a thousand users, you're going to have a more than a thousand different ways that they did this. They're going to have more mistakes and you're going to have to manage that. So with Android for Work, if something happens with that one particular um, app that you previously authorized, because when you authorize it, it's silently installed, which if you know anything about mobile devices, silently installing on Android is not a trivial task unless you're using something like Samsung, Samsung Safe, right? Or, or Knox. You, you can't just really just get it there. So now that Google lets you do that, that's pretty cool. But you can unauthorize it and it's silently removed. So you have a way to protect your environment and your data without doing anything more than logging into a console and clicking un, unapproved. You can't do that now without those tools. So I thought I'd share you that with you. That's stuff that's available today, by the way. It's not like future stuff. It's here. So I'm going to hit install. It's installed. Sometimes it crashes, by the way. And that's my reverse IMEI. You can write it down if you want. I don't care if you guys have it. The stuff's recorded. It's already all over the internet. Uh, I'm going to click away. And um, can I have a volunteer? We only got a couple minutes, so it's got to be quick. Other than someone who's genetically linked to me. Oh, beautiful. Come on up, sir. You can take the cliff bar if you want to. But you have to share. All right, Chris, thanks a lot. If you could be kind enough, please face the audience. We're not going to install anything on his phone. We're not going to do anything other than you go into your messages. I want you to send me a text. All right. Um, my phone number is, your pen's down? I don't care. Uh, 847. 1337. You're actually going to see it anyway. It doesn't matter. You guys could call me. That's fine. Oh, um, so before that, so in your text message, do forward slash and then your phone number. Forward slash, not the back. Beautiful. Hit send. Let's see if it works. Okay. You send it to me. I got that. And lo and behold, yeah, you got it too. So because the text messages are not hidden, when Chris sent me uh, the I'm now going to control this phone command, which is forward slash and his phone number. By the way, the Internet has your phone number, dude. Sorry. Thanks for the donation. No backsies. Um, <laughs> he got back that information that I was showing you in the code, which says the model number and all the other good stuff about my phone. I'm a 44.2. Um, so it's all on his phone. You can see that I sent it to him because that was the reply. Now, send something else like, Schwartzberg, you're a dick, or something like that. Don't tell your mom. I use foul language. Hi, Dave. <laughs> See, it showed up right there, right behind you. Isn't that pretty cool? So you're basically stealing my text messages. Or actually, you're sending me text messages, and then you're getting them back. But if, if you were to send me text, or you or anyone else here to send a text message to this phone, which you can do right now, and I've had people do that last year at Converge, it was pretty funny because they just got really raunchy. Um, it would all be going to him. <laughs> Thanks for being a good sport. Um, I'm going to take control away from you, so you don't have to do anything. <laughs> yeah. So there's a command that you can use also to take control away. But I'm going to show you how Zitmo Nom will do that. Where the heck did it go? All right. So this is ZitmoNom.org. Go to the web page. Try to come up with something creative and cute and funny and stuff. But uh, there's my phone number, 847-644-1337. I agree to the terms of service, and I hit NOM, and what you're going to see back here is another message. Whoops. Different phone number. No, I don't want, hey, can I create you as a contact? All right, there's the other one. So that's Zipmo NOM's phone number. 
And then you see the back and forth. That was with Twilio. Pretty cool. So instead of it being Chris, it's now Twilio who's talking to me. And um, did not get the message. Oh, it crashed. Sooner or later it does. I did get the message, though, before it crashed that Zipmo has been found. Reply with a yes, no quotes to disable the malware. I'll change that to PHA someday. Thanks for using Zipmonom. We'll see if it'll still work even though I it's crashed. It might not. It's a PHA. Do you expect it to be stable? So that's the kill command. It's just an exclamation point or a shebang. Uh, the one way to test it is if you... Oops. Kill it, kill. There's Zipmonom. Kill it. Now let's just clear everything out. And let's go to Android Security Suite. There's the activation code. It's running again. Go back to here. You can just hit the back button. It's friendly. Send it again. I received the text message. It looks like uh, did I get the kill. Sorry, you're not watching this. There you go. So that was the new one right here. From Zip, Zip Monom. Nothing back. It's dead. So the malware has been disabled. So that is clientless Android PHA or malware control without a client. Well, I already said that. So I've got to say it twice because it's so important. It's pretty cool, right? You guys ever see that before? I think I kind of created it. Should I patent it? Or you guys can go right there and go build a better one, which you probably could. Um, but maybe you can help me. But I hope you guys enjoyed that. I'm going to now flip back to the thank you slide, if I could find it. Yeah, it's in here somewhere. I don't even know where it will present. I'm going to start all over probably. Well, thank you, folks. I... I do appreciate your time and attention today. We ended a little early, which is always great. Gives you some time to get some refreshments and a little bio break. But I'll take some questions, too, if you want to hang out. Yes, sir. Some of the sources I get them from, they make you agree that you're getting it from them for research purposes and that you're not to distribute it. Um, I've received them from other people that I've worked with at antivirus companies that I've worked for before and it's it's just this thing that you cannot share it unless you're sharing it with another researcher that has been vetted as a researcher because if I give it to somebody like if I give it to Brandon and then he happens to leave it on his desktop and IT goes oh what is this and then now it's in someone else's hands and he doesn't know it's being proliferated and there's no control when I first started doing stuff with Zeus you may laugh I was told directly from the CTO of my prior employer, all the images that you're using need to be um, stored in VMs inside of a TrueCrypt volume. So you can imagine the size of the VMs and the size of the TrueCrypt volume, because if any, with the, the um, like the passcode and the key file type of uh, two-factor um, authentication, they said if anything happened, we will not res we will not feel any negative press. It will all be you, and that scared the shit out of me. So I don't share it. Not as being a jerk, just somebody scared the shit out of me one day. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Well, um, I'm here representing Mobile Iron, and if I gave somebody something or I gave something freely, you can only manage in the, the PR repercussions of that. And, and I'll never give it out. If you join the research team, like Ninja Sloth did, he brought his own malware to the table. And so do I, and I don't, and I don't want to be in jail. Or have to deal with all the negative PR and stuff like that. Hey, man, I got five kids to feed. What movie's that? Total Recall. Or was it Total Recall? The first one, not the second one. Right. Very good. What year? What year is that first one? Was it in the 80s or the 90s? All right, someone's Googling it. Any other questions? You like see, like I had to go off topic, sir. So, are you starting to see more and more of this type of malware using SMS kind of in this way? Or are you seeing the real big Tor looked like it was experimental, as as well as like things like using um, higher bitrate code. But what I'm seeing is what 
third party res or other researching companies are seeing. I'm not doing research where I'm collecting data and building analysis like uh, like a Fortinet is or Kaspersky or Sophos or McAfee. All right. Right. Well, SMS message, they're so lightweight, right, without the MMS part. So you could just get this stuff and collect it and then use it later. But when you think about it, you know, maybe most of us in the room, it might not be relevant. But if they can get this on somebody who's a, a high level official in a government or someone who's like, a famous celebrity that might be working on a project and they're trying to get some intelligence and they're talking about it in their text messages. The MTAM part was really kind of the beginning of it, but you could think of the applications. Yeah. Yep. Well, it would also be a collaborative attack, right? So if you had Zeus on their PC and you, you could see their screen and when they're going to log in, and then you can collect their text message with Zipmo now, I'm mean, sorry, Zipmo. Uh, then you now can also jump on that session where you could take over and get into their bank account and do dirty, bad things. Other questions? You guys are great. Thanks a lot. I uh, hope it wasn't too dry at certain points. Just kind of got to get through the baseline knowledge, but then it gets really fun when stuff starts flying back and forth. You had a question, young man? <laughs> Anyone else? I don't know. Chris? Puppet Shell? All right. Later, folks. Thanks a lot. Have a good one. <laughs>